Joyce, what is your reaction to this potential list of prosecution witnesses? Who stuck out to you? Well, you know, what sticks out to me, Steph, is the whole package, because one of the big questions here is whether prosecutors will ask the jury to rely on the testimony of Michael Cohen, who is someone who is known not to tell the truth. He's pled guilty to charges related to that. And I think we now can see that that's unlikely to be the case, that there are other witnesses here who will be used to corroborate Cohen's testimony at every step of the way, perhaps documents that they can introduce. And so it's this total package of witnesses that I think helps us start to understand what the prosecution's case will look like. And reminder, Michael, for those who say, listen, it was a guy, he had an affair, he was trying to protect his family, his reputation, his wife. This is about paying someone off to suppress information that could impact voters ahead of a presidential election. So who do you want to hear from most? So if you're a good God-fearing Christian, you wouldn't have been having the affair in the first place. So we wouldn't even be here now, would we? Uh, but since we're here, and let's have the conversation. And I think at the end of, you know, I mean, come on, it's just, you know, just, just keep it real. But the reality of it is, you know, I, I do want to hear um, the, the tale of the women who were involved in this story. Um, I think there's still a great deal of, of sort of backhanded discounting of uh, their story, what happened to them. Uh, how they were used in this process uh, by Trump in many respects, how they were, you know, bought off, paid off uh, for their silence because two things. One, he didn't want to know his wife, didn't want his wife to know who was at home nursing their, their, their baby boy. And he didn't want all those wonderful uh, Christian evangelicals that he was courting and courting and lying to about who he was. Um, and then, of course, on the heels of, you know, the Access Hollywood tape, this may have been just too much. So, yeah, I want to hear their stories. I want to hear uh, what Stormy has to say. I want to understand exactly how they were approached and what they were told. Because all of that, to me, and, and Joyce would understand this, particularly from a prosecutor's perspective, let me show you the man. Let me show you who he is. Let me show you how he operates. Let me show you how he treats people. Let me show you what he thinks of women in this position. And let me t show you how he asserts his power over them, thinking that $100,000, $130,000, $150,000 would be enough to shut them up because of his illegal behavior. And then in a very different scenario, Peter, sitting there as a defendant in a criminal trial, is the ultimate of powerless. He didn't have to be there for his civil trials. He chose to show up. For this one, he has no choice, as his private life is put under a microscope. But, Peter, do you think Trump wants to be there? He will be the center of attention. Every news truck, every camera will be there. And as humiliating as that might be, Trump is the originator of all news is good news, and shamelessness is his superpower. Yeah, he once uh, told campaign aides, he says, as long as they don't call you a pedophile, all news is good news, basically, to your point. And they're not calling him a pedophile, but they are calling him a lot of other things in this trial, none of which are very flattering. Uh, and so in some ways, you're right, obviously, it can't be a pleasant thing to to sit there and be accused of, of, of one thing after another, particularly at a time when you're trying to convince voters, as Michael said, uh, in the Republican base that you are, uh, you know, their champion. But on the other hand, I think you've got a point. He does love being center of attention. He does love being center of the show. He will make this as much a show as he possibly can. He doesn't want it to be about the facts or the law. He wants it to be about the politics. He wants to be able to say to his voters, that this is all part of a scheme. It's all part of a witch hunt. It's all political. It has nothing to do with anything. I did. That's going to be his goal. But up until now, we haven't seen him on trial for criminal charges. Been civil trials. They've been important. They obviously resulted in, in verdicts against him in every single instance, I believe. But this is a criminal trial that could actually deprive him of his liberty. And while he may want to make a show of it, at the end of the day, he faces the threat of being in prison as a result of a conviction if he, in fact, uh, can't convince the jury. Michael, the Washington Post talked to legal experts about whether a, I can't even believe I'm, I'm, I'm asking this, yeah. about whether a convicted felon, a felon 
in the United States can serve as president, and they actually said yes because the Constitution doesn't forbid it. You used to run yeah. the RNC. Can you imagine leading the party through a presidential election where there's a legitimate chance that your nominee will in fact be a felon and people don't seem to mind? Yeah, it says a lot about us, doesn't it? It, it, does, it says a lot less about the party as it does about us as, as citizens that we even countenance this right now and have put, put this man in the poll position to be the next president of the United States, having him leading in poll after poll. It is an abomination. It's embarrassing. And it's, in some respects, for me, it shows a level of desperation um, that we think that Donald Trump, who's going to somehow solve all our problems, America's never looked to one person to do that. We've all kind of done it together in the past. But that, that, that doesn't fit his narrative. So it is it is disappointing and it is very frustrating that our Constitution um, never anticipated that any individual who would be in this position would have the you know what to actually step and say, you know what, I'm going to be next president of the United States. <laughs> I mean, the, just the level of embarrassment beforehand would stop you from doing it. But there is no shame. There is no embarrassment with Donald Trump. You know, it, 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 it is all about him. And I would really hope that the media doesn't get carried away here over the, over the course of this thing, countdown clocks and all the other BS that goes in to leveling this up. This is a sobering moment for this country. And we need to treat it with, with that level of dignity and respect and, and sort of, yeah, humility and embarrassment. We should be embarrassed as a country right now that we find ourselves with this man as a potential next president who's going on trial for his criminal conduct and, and could, you know, wind up being convicted. And then what do we do? Then what do we say? So I, I think we need to be very sober in this at this time and not get caught up in Donald Trump's crazy behind circus, uh, that it's all about him. And, you know, as long as they don't call, call me a pedophile, it's good. Well, you know what? I think having these types of counts against you as a former president, that's worse in many respects because little kids looking up to you, families rely on you, and all you got to show them is the backside of your hand. So I, I think we need to be careful about how we approach this week. In the words of Melania Trump, be better. Joyce, um, there was a pretty interesting piece out on Coach Cardori. He was actually on this program last night. He's a former DOJ federal prosecutor. He writes for Politico. He says there is a chance Trump's legal team We'll try to get the judge to give the jury the option of convicting him on lesser charges, misdemeanor charges. What do you think of that strategy to keep Trump out of prison? So this would be a solid legal strategy, but I'm not sure that it's one Donald Trump will avail himself of. And here's essentially what happens. This is sort of the stuff of first-year criminal law when you're in law school. And the concept makes sense. It's sort of a math-based concept. We've talked a lot about the fact that in order to convict someone on a criminal charge, you have to prove all the elements of that charge. There's usually some conduct and a state of mind. Prosecutors have to prove all of that. Sometimes you might have a charge where prosecutors don't prove all of those elements. But there's a lesser included offense that they can convict on. So let's make that concrete in, in the Trump case here. In order to convict him on felony charges, prosecutors will have to prove that when he falsified these business records, he did so with the intent to commit another crime. And there's been some speculation at trial whether they'll talk about tax charges or election fraud or what have you. But there's a range of crimes that they can choose from. How Trump's lawyers would implement this strategy is they would say, look, yes, there might be proof here of falsification of business records, but there's no proof of intent to commit another felony. So, Judge, we want you to instruct the jury that if the prosecution, in fact, fails to prove that, they can convict only on this lesser included offense, which would be a misdemeanor. And that's the strategic benefit for Trump. It's a misdemeanor, not a felony. And then Trump can go out and try to 
to sell that to people as this wasn't serious or it was a witch hunt or, or whatever he wants to. But that would, in essence, be a victory for Trump because really he is not looking at acquittal here. I think their best hope is that they can pick a juror or two who will hold out against conviction, that they will hang the jury. It will be a mistrial, which means prosecutors could retry the case again. This notion of a lesser included offense and only a misdemeanor conviction would be very appealing if they could convince their client, Donald Trump, to let them go there. Peter, I want to lay this out for our audience one more time. This trial is essentially about Donald Trump trying to hide information from the American people during an election. And it will be happening right in the middle of another election. How do you think the public is going to react when this trial actually starts? Yeah, that's the open question, right? And you're right, Steph, that there's been a lot of conversation about how of the four different indictments, this is the less serious one. And partly that's because it seems so tawdry and unseemly. It's about, you know, uh, sex and all that. But the truth is there's a through line. I think you just put your finger on it. The through line is, according to the allegations at least, cheating in order to get power. Right. That's essentially what he's been accused of in the Georgia case and the Jack Smith January 6th case as well. Cheating in order to in this in this in that case to preserve power as president. Here he's being accused of cheating in order to obtain power by winning an election without letting the voters know things that they otherwise might be entitled to know. And by cheating uh, on the rules to do it, not just simply hiding things, but but cheating on rules that other businesses and other people who do business have to follow every day in New York. And so there is a serious issue here. It's not uh, just about sex. And we've, we've seen this in this country before, you know, sex scandals are one thing, but when it comes to the, uh, your obligations in a legal setting and in a business setting, uh, you know, you have to follow the rules just like everybody else. Now, they have to prove that he didn't do it. To Joyce's point, they have to prove all the different elements. And he hasn't been uh, proven yet. He's denied it. We should make sure to uh, point out that he's pleaded not guilty. But, you know, if he is convicted, it is, a, I think, part of a larger story here through all four of these indictments in a way. Hey everyone, MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.